Welcome to the Hockey Museum. The seventh Olympiad was offered to Belgium after the terrible First World War had laid waste to its country in the hope of giving a boost to its economy and national morale. Four teams that took part and they played a round-robin tournament. The four teams being Belgium, France, Denmark and Britain. It should be noted that it was Great Britain that took part and not England, although it was in fact the England team that represented Great Britain. In the round-robin tournament, Britain played against Denmark and Belgium in the first couple of games and had resounding victories. The French, fearing heavy defeat, invited the British team out for dinner on the Thursday evening in the hope that they might be able to inflict a drunken stupor on their opposition which could help them the following day. In the event, it was the French who failed to turn up for the match on the Friday and so Britain were awarded a walkover. The, the story about the French attempt at skullduggery is one that has been perpetuated by the family and friends of the British contingent. There is another story that says that the French were incarcerated at their lodgings because they were fearful of illness. This could have something to do with the Spanish flu. We will never know the full story here. Although we've seen a number of Olympic medals over the years, and indeed we have a 1908 gold medal in our collection here at the Hockey Museum, we've never before seen a medal from the 1920 Olympics. It is in fact a silver medal which was originally gilt, which is a covering of gold onto the silver metal. Obviously that gold has worn off over the years and now it looks very much like what it is, a silver medal. The illustrations on the medal are of an Olympic athlete, fairly typical scene, with a naked gentleman bearing a laurel leaf uh, wreath and the seventh Olympiad wording on it. On the other side, it depicts Antwerp Harbour and one of the legends of that area where a giant, the Droon Antigoon, had been terrorising shipping and a Roman soldier by the name of Brabo had cut off the hand of this giant and cast it into the depths. So on the 5th of September, the family, a group of 10, suitably and socially distanced into two groups, came to visit us. It was particularly fortuitous that this family representation should be of Harry Haslam, the goalkeeper, because being the goalkeeper, he would have been listed as the first player on the team list. This therefore meant that in the listing of players by number, Harry Haslam became Great Britain player number one. We put on a special display of material re relating to both Harry and the 1920 Olympics. As part of a soft launch of our GB statistics project, we arranged for a cap to be presented to the family in honour of Harry, which also recorded his GB record, which was just the two games that he played in, in Antwerp in 1920. This cap was presented to Richard Ottaway, the great-great-grandson of Harry, by Simon Mason, very appropriately a three times Olympic goalkeeper. The formal launch of our Great Britain Statistics project will take place in May next year, 2021, with the two teams that are, will be going to the Tokyo Olympics being presented with their caps on that occasion. The GB Stats programme will give us not only the player numbers, but also the full histories of all the GB players, full listing of all the games, 
and match numbers, together with lots of other information for head-to-heads. It is an amazing piece of work. We also intend to make GB caps available to all past GB players. And we invite any GB players seeing this broadcast to please get in touch so that we can discuss how we can make your cap available to you.